What is up everyone, Thomas here, and welcome to episode two of the sound series. I hope y'all are ready. I'm very excited about this episode. I feel like this video has been long overdue considering the cult falling that these amps have. So to kick things off, we're gonna talk specs. We're gonna talk about the differences between the first and second gen. We're even gonna talk about two versions some of y'all may not even know about. After that, I'm gonna do a demo with my second gen. I'm gonna run it with some different pedals, different tunings to show the versatility of these amps. And then finally at the end, we are gonna talk about the current market. How hard are these things to find? What should you expect to pay for one? And there are options out there. There's some builders making some really amazing clones. I actually own one. I'm gonna bring it out at the end and talk a little bit about it. So enough of the intro, let's talk specs. The first generation Model Ts were made from early 1973 to 1975. This version uses a standard Fender tone stack. The second generation Model Ts were made from late 1974 to 1978. This version uses a back sandal tone stack with a three position mid frequency boost switch. It also has a blue and white wire from the master volume pot which reduced the volume once rolled past seven or eight and a dual gain master volume pot. Before we move on, I want you to make a mental note of a few things. Notice how on the first gen, the knobs are black. Also look at the nameplate. It's smaller and basically a screen printed piece of aluminum that's black and white. Now look at the second gen. It has the red knobs. The badge is larger, but it's plastic and it has the red sun logo. These are easy ways to identify these amps apart, but the most important one is the three position mid frequency boost switch. Only the second chance had that, and that's always a dead giveaway. And all of these things will be crucial for the next part. So in this next section, we're going to talk about some of the rare versions of these amps. I'm going to go according to year. So the first one I want to talk about is the Coliseum. And the Coliseum was made in late 1973 with a slightly different chassis. It was a prototype of the second gen, and they cut out the Coliseum name and made a whole line of Coliseum, but solid state amps. And the next one is the Transitional T. It was made in 1974, and it got the nickname because it was Sun's transitional period from the first gen to the second gen. And basically all it is is a second gen, but it has the outfittings of the first gen, like the black knobs and the small logo. We'll probably never see one of these in the States, but if you're across the pond, you might run into one. This is an export model. Um, not exactly sure on the years they made these. This one happens to be a 74. There's not a lot of information about these out there, but these exports had uh, an XLR jack on the front panel and it had a switch for 12 volt power. So those are some of the specs that make each version different, but here are some specs that are exactly the same in every single version. Both amps use four 6550 power tubes providing 150 watts of power, and they use three 12AX7 preamp tubes. Both amps use a diode rectifier, and the first and third tube are wired the same in both gens and the power supply and output stage is wired the same in both amps. And here's all the gear I use for the demo. This is my second gen. It has the original power tubes in it. I did change the preamp tubes, but more about that later on in the video. And this is my guitar I use. This is a 97 Gibson SG Series 1. It's got a pretty simple layout. Tone volume has a coil tap. It has the Gibson 500T bridge pickup in it. I did change the bridge. It has a Tone Pros roller bridge in it. And this guitar is 24 fret, uh, rosewood fretboard. And I did change the tuners on this too. It now has clues and locking tuners. And I used a bunch of different pedals for this demo. Um, if you look at the bottom right hand of the screen during the playthrough, it'll tell you what pedal's on, the settings I used and the tuning and all that. We'll be using that 70s Shure PE54D, the same one as last time. And we're trying something new. He just got this Warehouse Veteran 30, so we'll be using that in the demo today.
So as you can see, these are very versatile amps. I used one guitar, one speaker cabinet, and one amp. The only thing I changed was the tuning and the pedal. Even on the amp, some of y'all may have noticed, I never even touched the EQ. The only thing I changed was the input and the gain on the input. So the big question, how much do these things cost? Well, they're fucking expensive. I'm not gonna lie. I got this one off of Reverb last year, January 2020. Got it from a vintage guitar shop in Chicago. And they were asking three grand for it. I offered them 24, they took it. It had free shipping too. And all said and done with the taxes and everything, it was like 2,600 bucks. But the amp was in really good shape. It had the original tubes in it too. Um, Tongue Soul 6550s, which I'm still running now. They sound amazing. I'm gonna be really sad when they die. Um, I did change the preamp tubes. I'm running the JJ ECC 83Ss, the high gains. And this amp sounds amazing. This is one that will never leave the arsenal. This is my number one. This is what I use in Witch Pit. It's what I recorded the new album with. And apparently I'm not the only one that feels this way about these amps. I would say they're in pretty high demand. If you check a site like eBay or Reverb, one might pop up every two to three months. And I would say right now in 2021, the going rate is about 2,500 bucks. You'll have the occasional, you know, fluctuation with the market, you know, condition could affect that too. Um, however, I just saw two on Reverb. They were listed at five grand a piece. There was a first gen and second gen from the same vintage guitar shop. I think it was in Portland. And they ended up selling for like 3,800 bucks a piece, which is outrageous. But stuff like that happens and then it drives the market up. So let's talk clones. If you're someone that's not really into buying vintage amps and you want the modern reliability of a newer amp, this is definitely the way to go. And the first one I want to talk about is a company in Germany called Jupiter Effects. And I've got to talk to Chris. He's like the founder and builder over there. And he says he makes a spot on first generation clone. And by the pictures, you can see these are super high quality amps, really nice. Um, if you go on YouTube, you can watch some demos. I have, they sound fucking amazing. Um, so his prices start out at 2,500 euros, which equates to about 2,900 US. Um, plus shipping, and it's about a one month build time. His, his links will be in the description. Um, the second one I wanna talk about is from a company in Sweden, 378 Amps. And Peter is the founder builder over there. He helped me out tremendously with this video. He gave me all the technical info, you know, the differences between the first and second gen. So thank you, brother. Um, he builds super high quality amps, all handmade. You can see by the pictures, very beautiful amps. Um, he builds a 50 watt version and a 150 watt version. And he'll do the first or second gen, which is really cool. And his prices start out at 2000 euros, which equates to about 2400 US plus shipping. And he has about a one month build time too. And finally, the last one is this one. This is the one I own. This is the Rectangular Micro T. And some of you might recognize it. It might look like the Hex Micro T. Well, it's because it is. Same guy builds them. He's just doing his own version, which is exactly the same. It just says rectangular on it now. Um, this is actually a preamp. This is uh, an amp that runs on one EL34 and two 12AX7s. And on the back, there's a line in and line out that you can hook it up to a bigger amp like through the effects loop. So, you know, so if you have like a, I don't know, 5150 that has an effects loop or something, you can hook this Model T preamp to it, and now you have a 100 watt Model T. Very cool amp. Um, this is what I use at home. Works perfectly for you know bedroom level volume. Um, I haven't yet hooked it up to a bigger amp yet. I'm going to. This is actually going to be the next demo. Um, I'm going to tell you guys all about it. I'm going to save that for the next video. But yeah, I love this little thing. So that concludes today's episode. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope you learned something today. I gave some good information. These amps are fucking amazing. Remember, I'm gonna do a full demo on this in a couple weeks, so I didn't wanna to give too much away about it. And remember, if you like what you watch today, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out tremendously. And real quick, a few shout outs. Steve at Does It Doom, thank you so much for helping us launch this new series and letting your people know. It really jump-started things for us. 
Peter at 378 Amps, thank you so much for helping me out with the technical info. It really saved my ass. Mike Jones with the Garage Recordings, thank you for the amazing sounding demos. So this is the Sun Model T episode. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you.